In a desolate wasteland, Rick gets flung several feet across the ground during a fight, seriously worrying he might kick the bucket. Just then, his mentors emerge from the smoke. Instead of offering first aid, they shower him with praise for his progress over the past two years of grueling training. They assure him he should breeze through the E-rank adventurer exams. In this world, adventurers are typically young due to the physical strain, but some adults, like Rick, never give up on their dreams. Determined, Rick heads to the reception desk to get his exam ticket. The receptionist, while confirming his details, recognizes Rick and excitedly reminds him that they used to know each other. Rick doesn't recognize her at first, but soon recalls they were co-workers two years ago. She was shocked when Rick abruptly resigned from his job to become an adventurer. Rick feels a bit embarrassed since most people start as G-rank adventurers in their teens and reach E-rank within a year or two. The receptionist asks what he's been up to and Rick explains that he's been training in the mountains with his mentors for the past two years. Just then, the guild's usual drunkard approaches the desk and starts flirting with a receptionist. When she tries to decline, he gets rough, prompting Rick to step in and knock him out with a light tap to the stomach. The receptionist apologizes. Rick said, It's fine, but he still doesn't understand why Gil serves alcohol. With that settled, Elisa finally hands Rick his exam ticket. To his dismay, Rick received the unfortunate number 14242. He heads outside where a maid named Rionette greets him. She asks if he's done with his registration, and Rick confirms, thanking her for waiting, expressing his excitement for the exam. Inside, the other adventurers are shocked by the handprint left on the drunkard's armor, which is made of dense steel. Two guys recognize the drunkard from a mugshot and reveal he is Damal, an a rank adventurer wanted for 30 counts of assault. The receptionist knows Rick is responsible but realizes he may be overqualified if he can take out an a rank adventurer. Meanwhile, Rick undergoes a physical exam and is measured to be about 5'8". The physicians are surprised he's taking the test at 32 years old. Next, the candidates are instructed to place their hands on a crystal ball to measure their mana levels. The orb glows according to their mana, with the highest result being a C. When Rick touches it, the orb barely lights up, earning him an F. The other candidates mock him, but as the examiner calls for the next candidate, the orb spontaneously shatters. The next test measures offensive abilities by striking a green rod a special slime bag that absorbs impacts. Rick recalls training with a golden slime bag and being told by his mentor that he had to destroy it with his fists to become an adventurer. Despite his doubts, he trained relentlessly. Candidates line up to strike the bag, with the second son of the Darrier family impressing everyone with his hellfire spell despite being only 11 years old. Rick, remembering his mentor's deadly fireballs, is shocked at the kid's seemingly powerful yet tiny fireball. When it's Rick's turn, the examiner questions if he's really over 30 and suggests he should quit due to his poor mana score and age. Rick feels judged and considers giving up but decides to give it his all. He winds up his punch, and the bag splatters everywhere, shocking everyone, including Rick. The kid, frustrated by Rick's success, vows to outperform him in the next test, which involves defensive magic. However, Rick effortlessly tanks a powerful nature spell, leaving the kid speechless. The examiner compliments Rick's skill, and Rick, doing his best, appreciates it. Rick has been giving it his all, relying solely on a first nature spell for defense. The examiner advises him to use higher tier defensive magic but Rick reveals that he only knows First Order spells and is truly doing his best. The examiner is shocked that someone with such precise mana control is limited to First Order spells. Rick assures him that his basic spells are sufficient for anything the examiner can throw at him. Taking this as an insult, the examiner prepares a Fifth Order spell to show Rick not to underestimate him. A shock cyclone echoes through the kingdom, attracting Sylvester to the exam center. Sylvester learns that an F-rank adventurer, Rick, destroyed a slime bag with his bare hands and blocked a fifth nature spell using basic defense magic. 
Initially skeptical, Sylvester realizes the truth when he sees Rick confidently taking the written part of the exam. After the test, Rick tells Renette he's confident he aced the written part, thanks to his 14 years as a guild receptionist. However, he worries about his overall scores due to an F in his MANA exam. Renette reassures him, but a kid named Freed angrily confronts Rick for outperforming him, ruining his chance to show off. Freed's sister, Angelica Dute, arrives and, seeing her brother upset, challenges Rick to a duel by throwing her glove. Unaware of the noble custom, Rick picks up the glove, accepting the challenge. Angelica, a second-class royal knight, sets the duel's penalty. The loser must serve the winner for life. Renette explains that a second-class knight is about B-rank. Rick is nervous but Renette encourages him, reminding him of his rigorous training. The duel begins, and Angelica uses her blink step to showcase her speed. However, Rick finds her movement slow and easily dodges her attacks. Angelica, frustrated, uses her special technique to move three times faster. But Rick still dodges effortlessly. She tries one last desperate attack but trips, and Rick's punch blows a hole in the ground, scaring Angelica. Realizing Rick's strength, she surrenders, forgetting her penalty. She runs away, and Rick, unconcerned about the bet, waits for his exam results. Renette informs Rick that his mentors are coming to check on him, causing him to panic as their presence always spells trouble. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for upcoming episodes. Cheers.